Thursday is the 4th of July Independence Day, and in recent years, there's been a spike in gun violence on the day that we celebrate our freedom. Joining us now in studio is Montgomery County District Attorney Daryl Bailey. District Attorney, we hear the rumors and the word that things get worse when it gets hotter outside during the summer months. Is that true? Is that what you see on your end? There's no doubt about it. And the reason for that is because kids are out of school, uh, so that's one of the contributing factors, but it's also so hot. There's a lot of family gatherings, there's just a lot of parties, a lot of people gathering in one spot. And with it being so hot and so many people out, tempers can flare, arguments ensue, and uh, unfortunately we see a lot of uh, gunfire and uh, assaults and homicides and things of, of that nature uh, during this time of year. Fourth of July, a lot of people will be having those gatherings, family reunions, cookouts, fireworks, all the things. If we want to gather, what can we do to do so safely? Well, we need to make sure, first of all, parents need to make sure they know where their kids are going and uh, who their kids are hanging out with. That's, that's the first thing. But we need to, you know, if there's going to be a large gathering um, that's uh, unsupervised, don't go to that. Uh, you know, we, we saw just recently about the big street party that was happening over in North Pass. Just don't participate in that. It's dangerous times. We don't need to be participating in those type of things. But if you are going to a, a, a large gathering like that, make sure law enforcement knows and maybe ask for extra patrols or, you know, just be cautious. If there's, uh, if there's going to be drinking, especially alcohol, which is another contributing factor, drugs, those are all warning signs that something could go wrong. So just be aware of those things. And, you know, obviously uh, we like to always remind people about drinking and driving this time of year. But um, just, it's just always good to be cautious. Uh, you know, it could cost you your life or a family member's life. Are you seeing, and I know you don't patrol the streets per right. se with like law enforcement, but are you seeing more cases of drunk driving and distracted driving, especially since everyone has cell phones in their hands all the time? No doubt about it. I mean, the, uh, with cell phones, the distracted driving has just dramatically increased. And, you know, used to when I was following behind somebody and I'd see them swerving from one side to the other, I just assumed they're drunk. I don't even assume that anymore. I assume that they're on their cell phone and watching YouTube on TikTok. Who knows what? Right, and 100% of the time, just about they are. I drive by them and I see them on their phone. And I think people don't realize too, on your phone, and then you combine that with drinking, smoking, staying out late. I'm sure that just increases the statistics even more. All of those factors uh, contribute uh, to that. And, I, you know, I tell everybody this time of year, if you are drinking or even distracted driving and you kill someone, you're going to be prosecuted for murder, just as if you shot that person. And those carry hefty sentences. I've seen, it, seen people sentenced to life in prison for killing someone driving intoxicated. So it's a good reminder uh, for everyone. If you're going to drink, plan ahead. You know, make sure you have a designated driver. I know that sounds cliche, but it's important for you to do. It's important for you to remind your children, and you know, even on our waterways to be careful because you can be distracted and also uh, intoxicated on our waterways and cause just as much uh, Damage. And if you don't have a designated driver, have a designated Uber person. Have someone in the group who's going to call the Uber or the Lyft for the entire group and make sure everyone gets home safely. We have so many options nowadays with Absolutely. companies like that where you don't have to get on the road. You really don't have to. Now, another thing that we see and hear a lot, gunshots but not necessarily related to the typical shootings. We see people pull out those guns for what they call celebratory yeah. gunfire on the 4th of July. And I know you talk about this every single year. Are those numbers at least decreasing some or are they kind of about the same? I don't think so. Actually, I think, I'm afraid to say, I think they're increasing. We see them 4th of July. We also see them New Year's Eve is the biggest times of the years that, a year that we see them. And those are extremely dangerous. Those bullets, um, if they go up, they come down and we have seen people killed or severely injured just because of the celebratory gunfire. So that's something that um, obviously we caution people not to do. It's very, very dangerous. And if you see that going on, please report it to the authorities. Uh, call 911, that is an emergency situation. I feel like though it is hard to report gunfire to police. If you're in your home, you hear something, you call police and they say, well, where, where is it happening at? 
I, somewhere near my home? I don't, is, is it next door? Is it a few blocks away? I don't know. What can we do to report it and really help out police and authorities? Well, I do think it's, obviously I, I don't encourage anybody to go outside to try to find a better location uh, to where it's coming from, but I do encourage people to call and report it because, you know, there may be an officer in the area, there may be an officer who can respond, and usually it, uh, the folks that are doing this are not just doing it one time, they're doing it over a, a period of time. So it could be that the officer is able to catch them. And officers have caught people in the past. You know, it's hard. I'm not going to uh, sit here and dance around that. It is hard for officers to catch them. But we have caught some in the past. And, you know, we're ready to make examples out of anybody who's caught doing that because it's such a dangerous situation. We've been talking gun violence, just not just for the 4th of July, but really all of June here in the city of Montgomery. I know you've been very passionate about some of the incidents that have happened lately. What all are you doing at your office to try to lower some of these numbers? Well, you know, obviously we're prosecuting the individuals that commit these crimes. And my message to the community has been and will continue to be that if you commit a crime of violence in Montgomery, I want you off the streets forever. And that's what my team is dedicated to. Uh, we took two people off the streets just a couple of weeks ago that committed crimes of violence. We're going to continue to do that. But Jasmine, as you know, that's not the answer. We as a community have got to look at uh, doing things on the front end to keep kids, especially out of our criminal justice system to begin with. You know, and just a couple of things uh, I would suggest that could help that is one, we need parents to start parenting. You know, the, I know that not every parent um, is not parenting. You have some parents that do a great job, but their kids just go with the wrong crowd and just get in trouble. But I see so many times uh, when I'm at a crime scene and we have someone who's deceased and we're looking for someone, I pull up their social media and the signs are there, the evidence is there. You know, they are flashing guns, uh, money, drugs. And if parents would just take a look at their child's social media, know who their children are hanging out with, and go through your child's room. If they're in your house, you have the right to go through their room, see if they have drugs or guns. And then that's the time to seek help. We've got so many great nonprofits in Montgomery that are, are here and willing to help. It's way too late when the person's uh, dead on the sidewalk or the person's in the courtroom about to be sentenced. It, you can't at that time help the person. It's too late at that point. Prevention is key. District Attorney Daryl Bailey, thank you so much Absolutely. for joining us here in Alabama Live. We appreciate it. Thank you.